Ugh. Halloween, the Rob Zombie film. Uh, I believe you mean fucking Halloween, the fucking Rob shit zombie fucking fuck. Yeah. That's how every character talks in this movie. This was by far the worst um, that we've seen so far. Like, all, all the other ones were, like, either boring or they were funny bad. This one was the kind of bad that just sucks the energy out of you. I mean, even then, there's, like, good stuff in it. None like, of the characters are likable. All of the characters are terrible. Except Brad Dorif. Because Brad Dorif is amazing. But that's only because the actor is good. Yes. Like, none of his dialogue is particularly uh, interesting. Yeah, he's a totally uninteresting character, but I don't hate him. That's saying something for this movie. <laughs> um, every other line in this movie is an F-bomb. Which, you know, I don't mind. It's been in the series since the start. You know, it's uh, just... Yeah, they, they've... Not, not cursing to this extent. Not cursing to this extent. They're, you know, cur cussing has been a thing in the series, but it's not... Like every other word, yeah. this this movie is just like, and it's it's the kind of cussing that a thirteen year old does. Yeah, it's not it's not to add um, you know weight to a scene. It's not to prove a point. It's not to it's to, it has a point. It's to make the characters assholes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's not funny. Like the first um, so unprofessional. So unprofessional. The the first um, scene in the movie is just how bad people talk, the movie. Like, it's trying to pretend to be realistic domestic abuse, abuse, but it's not real in any sense. No people on planet Earth talk like this. Hold on. Just... Shut up. There's like, you'll see like snobby critics talk about like slasher movies. He's like, oh, snobby critic, not supposed to like the dumb teen movies. So it's just like, ugh, this movie is so depraved. It has such a, such a negative worldview. And I'm like, I don't know what world you're living in where like Halloween is okay, but Friday the 13th is complete garbage. But this, this is like... Depraved dark world view. Yeah. Like, and it's okay to have characters that you don't like. Usually you reserve that for the villain, but you can also have a couple of main characters who you don't particularly like, but you want to have your main hero, or hero, I guess, in this, in this situation. It's not really a traditional hero. But um, you want to have your main characters, your core characters, be likable. Because that makes you invested in the story. I don't care about any of these characters except for what happened in the original. That's well, the problem with this movie is because I, I know everybody from the first one. I know what their character is supposed to be. Yeah, Lori got shafted the hardest yeah. in this movie. Because, like, in the first movie, she's this nice person, this distinct character, mm -hmm. very memorable. In this, I couldn't tell her from the other characters. Yeah. Like, there were a lot of early scenes of them talking together, and I'm like, which one's Lori? I don't know. Yeah. The only person that I could really tell was from the the, the original movie was uh, Dr. Loomis. Mm -hmm. But that's because they went out of their way. Like, he would... That's another problem with this movie, is the pacing. The first movie was an hour and a half long, and it just told the story of Michael killing, you know, three or four teenagers. Yeah. This movie had an entire hour dedicated to what happened after the first night where he killed somebody. And then the second hour of the movie is just Halloween, the first movie. Except all the characters are shit. Yeah. It, it hurts. Like, we got, we, got to the, we got to the one hour mark and I was like, wait, so now they're going to start the main plot. And they, it just really... It, this is gonna sound weird. It overly humanizes Michael. So you get to later in the film where Loomis is like, he's this entity of pure evil, he's unstoppable, and it's like, no, he isn't. No, you spent the first 20 minutes of the movie showing us him as a kid yeah. going to school, being a normal person. 
See, okay, so in horror movies, the kind of Mike, the kind of villain Michael would be is called the big bad. You don't really need an explanation for who he is, what what he is. He's just there, and he's there to utterly wreck your shit. Mm-hmm. That's the entire purpose of Michael. I mean, he's... You don't need the backstory. Um, a good example of this would be uh, the Joker. We don't really know who he is, where he comes from, but you know that whenever he comes on scene, it's it's bad news. Yeah. And, you know, that if, if you have a clear idea of what that character is, you can make even a seemingly boring villain like that into an interesting character. The first movie did that very well. Um, I mean, we saw the first kill he had as a kid, and that was very brutal, but we didn't see... There, there was a lot cut out of it. It was a perspective shot. We didn't see the knife actually stabbing her. We saw another another angle over here. We, there was a lot left out of it for a reason. This movie decided to um, tell all of the details of what happened that night, that night, including showing the actual death of his sister that he killed that night uh, as, a, as a kid. And that really, that really serves as a detriment to the movie because it tells you too much. It gives you too much information. I can almost see where Rob Zombie's going with this. Just because I've seen a few of his other movies. Like, I really like House of a Thousand Corpses. I can kind of see where he's going. But he just... I think he takes it too far. Because none of the characters are likable. The focus is clearly on the violence. Mm -hmm. He has all the names of the characters from Halloween, but he captured nothing about those characters. Like, even even Dr. Loomis in this movie was way more over the top than Donald Pleasance was. And Donald Pre- Pleasance got pretty goofy in some of the later movies. Mm-hmm. But, like, this one was like, he is, an, he is a force of pure evil in the world, and he won't stop until everybody's been killed. It's like, shut up. Shut up. It, it's, it's... And, you know, I'm not even that big of a fan of the first movie. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was good... And I really, I, I liked it, but I don't think it's a, a masterpiece of horror. But it did a lot of things right. This movie took the things that it did right and just threw them out the window and kept all the. It's a shell. It's a shell. That's what the this movie is. Cinematography is still good. The cinematography was still good, but so I think it's because Rob Zombie's a good director. I think the first movie. He's has, just a terrible writer. I think the first movie did the cinematography way better, though. The first shot in the That's in fair. the first movie was a was a perspective shot. You had the mask over his head. You you didn't know exactly what was going on. And then there were other parts in the movie where it was like, uh, it it would go between handheld and it would go between uh having a having having the camera on a dolly, and the the handheld shots had a little bit more of an uneasy feeling to them, and it wasn't like it was shaky cam either. It was like, um, it was just general bobbing like if a person was walking that's how it would be and it kind of made you take a little bit more notice of how things were shot this movie was fine i can't say anything bad about it but i felt like it was just a little bit too conventional in how it was shot i if the the i didn't judge the other movies this harshly because they weren't trying to be the original They were trying to cash in. Yeah, that's the thing. There are a few things peeking through, like, this is actually good. There's a lot of talent in this movie. Mm -hmm. Malcolm McDowell, Brad Dourif, uh, even Rob Zombie, I think, is a good musician and can do well as a director. Mm -hmm. Usually doesn't, but he can. Right. But it just doesn't translate. You gotta wrap it up because there's no more room on my SD card. Yeah, I was I was wondering what that green line on the screen was, but all right. Any final thoughts? Um, I would not recommend this. No. It just it takes the energy out of you, and I'm not looking forward to the sequel. Bye.